Hello everyone. Welcome to uh, The Psychology of Everything. I'm delighted to have you here as we delve into the captivating realm of psychology together. A few months ago, I came across a thought-provoking discussion about education in Africa led by Maponga Joshua, who eloquently stated, and I quote, for the longest time, our academic program, our education has been a colonial education. We have been learning more about British, Chinese, French, and American history. Our literature has revolved around Julius Caesar, William Shakespeare, and others. But what Africa truly needs is not this kind of colonial education. We need to standardize our education across the entire continent of Africa, incorporating our own rich history, from the ancient kinetic history of Egypt to the kingdoms of Uganda, Nigeria, Sudan, Ethiopia, Zimbabwe, and more, into our curriculum for students. Mapoga's words resonated with me. I believe he was essentially describing and highlighting the effects of what Brazilian educator and philosopher Paulo Freire coined as the banking model of education. The banking model of education, also known as the traditional or conventional model, is an instructional approach where teachers act as depositors of knowledge and students are considered passive recipients who are expected to absorb and memorize information. In this model, the teacher is seen as the authority figure who imparts knowledge to students, while students are expected to passively receive and reproduce that knowledge through exams or assessments. This model is often characterized by one-way communication, rote memorization, and a focus on standardized tests. The banking model of education is considered ineffective because it lacks active engagement, relevance, inclusivity, critical thinking, creativity, and student empowerment. Modern educational approaches emphasize learner-centered and participatory models that prioritize active engagement, critical thinking, problem-solving, and relevance to real-world contexts for effective and meaningful learning. Today, we will delve into a discussion on the banking model versus the problem-posing model of education and explore which approach can better foster Africa's growth and development. Stay tuned until the end to find out. We will probably do an entire series on the psychology of education. The psychology of education is the study of how psychological principles and theories can be applied to the field of education. It focuses on understanding how people learn, develop, and acquire knowledge, and how educational practices can be optimized to facilitate effective learning and development. Education models and theories are crucial in psychology as they provide a conceptual framework for understanding how individuals learn and develop, inform the design of instructional strategies and interventions, and advance research in the field of education. They are essential tools for psychologists, educators, and researchers to promote effective teaching and learning practices in various educational settings. Education models and theories are used by educators, psychologists, and researchers to design effective educational programs, develop curriculum, and facilitate learning in schools, workplaces, communities, and other settings. However, let us not stray from today's topic. Let's look at the issue that Maponga highlighted. The quote by Maponga Joshua reflects a critique of the colonial education system that has been prevalent in Africa, wherein the curriculum is focused on foreign history and literature, such as British, Chinese, French, and American history, rather than the rich and diverse history of Africa itself. Maponga argues that this type of education is not suitable for Africa and calls for a standardized education. system across the continent that includes African history, specifically referencing the ancient Egyptian history and various African kingdoms. This perspective aligns with Paulo Freire's views on education, particularly his concept of banking education versus problem-posing education. Freire argued that traditional education often follows a banking model where students are passive recipients of knowledge deposited by the teacher without critical engagement or understanding of their own lived experiences. 
This type of education tends to prioritize the knowledge of the dominant culture and often ignores or marginalizes the history, culture, and experiences of the oppressed or colonized communities. On the other hand, Freire advocated for a problem-posing approach to education where students are active participants in the learning process, encouraged to critically analyze and question the world around them, including their own history and culture. This approach Approach fosters a sense of empowerment, critical consciousness, and agency among students as they are encouraged to challenge the dominant narratives and construct their own understanding of reality. In the context of Maponga's quote, the critique of colonial education in Africa can be seen as aligning with Freire's concept of banking education. Maponga argues that the current education system in Africa focuses on foreign history and literature which can be seen as a passive reception of knowledge from the colonial powers without actively engaging with and valuing the rich history and culture of Africa. Instead, a Maponga calls for a standardized education system that includes African history, which aligns with Freire's idea of problem-posing education, where students are encouraged to critically engage with their own history and culture, construct their own knowledge, and develop a sense of empowerment and agency. Both Mapong and Freire advocate for an education system that recognizes and values the diverse cultural and historical experiences of marginalized communities and promotes critical thinking, empowerment, and agency among students. They emphasize the importance of education as a means of liberation, challenging oppressive systems, and promoting social justice. By incorporating the history and culture of Africa into the curriculum, as Maponga suggests, and adopting a problem-posing approach to education, as Freire proposes, education in Africa can be transformed into a tool for empowerment and liberation, enabling students to critically engage with their own reality and shape a better future. Problem Proposing education can be particularly effective in promoting Africa's development by empowering students to become active, engaged, and critical participants in their own education and in their communities. Problem-posing education encourages students to think critically and independently rather than simply memorizing and regurgitating information. This empowers students to question existing systems, challenge assumptions, and develop their own perspectives on social, economic, and political issues. In Af Africa, this can promote a culture of critical thinking and innovation, which is essential for addressing complex challenges and driving sustainable development. Problem-posing education encourages students to come up with creative solutions to real-world problems. It promotes creativity, originality, and ingenuity, which are crucial for fostering innovation and entrepreneurship, two key drivers of economic development. By encouraging students to think creatively and develop new ideas, problem-posing education can help unleash the potential of Africa's youth to become agents of change and contribute to the continent's development. Problem-posing education encourages students to explore and analyze issues that are relevant to their local context. This can include problems related to poverty, inequality, environmental sustainability, healthcare, and other social and economic issues that are prevalent in Africa. By engaging students in their local context, problem-posing education helps students develop a deep understanding of their communities and encourages them to find solutions that are culturally relevant and sustainable. Problem-posing education emphasizes the importance of active citizenship and encourages students to become engaged and responsible members of their communities. It fosters a sense of social responsibility, civic engagement, and advocacy, which are essential for promoting social justice, addressing inequalities, and driving positive change in Africa. By empowering students to become active citizens, problem-posing education can contribute to building a more inclusive, just, and democratic society. Problem-posing education often involves collaborative and participatory learning approaches where students work together in groups to analyze problems, generate solutions, 
and implement action plans. This helps students develop important collaborative skills such as communication, teamwork, negotiation, and leadership, which are crucial for success in the modern workforce. These skills are also essential for addressing complex societal challenges that require interdisciplinary and collaborative approaches, such as poverty, climate change, and healthcare, which are critical issues in Africa's development. Problem posing education emphasizes the importance of students taking ownership of their learning process and becoming active participants in their own education. This fosters self efficacy or the belief in one's own ability to make a difference and empowers students to take initiative, set goals, and work towards achieving them. This sense of empowerment can translate into increased confidence, motivation, and resilience, which are important for students to overcome challenges and succeed in their personal and professional lives. Problem-posing education encourages students to identify and address real-world problems that are relevant to their local communities. This can lead to the development of sustainable solutions that are rooted in local knowledge, culture, and resources. By addressing local needs and promoting sustainability, problem-posing education can contribute to long-term development in Africa that is environmentally, socially, and economically sustainable. Thank you so much for staying until the end of today's discussion. Your attention and engagement are greatly appreciated. If you enjoyed today's content and would like to see more, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. By doing so, you'll never miss a new video and you'll be helping us grow our community of like-minded individuals interested in exploring the fascinating world of psychology. Once again, thank you for your time and I hope to see you again soon. <laughs>